My name is Lindsay Lee Hobson and I work with forward thinking organisations to elevate their emerging leaders and create the ultimate next generation of leadership. I'm also the founder of the Learning and Development Collective where driven and passionate L&D professionals come together to exchange trending topics, innovative ideas and the best suppliers for their training calendars. Nearly so characters. Russell, we are very excited to have you here today in the studio because you're one of those solutions that we have discussed in our brand new program in the metaverse that supports the career development of L&D professionals through 2023 and beyond. Russell, tell us a little bit about yourself and your area of expertise. Oh, thanks for having me here first off. Uh, area of expertise, probably sales, marketing and promotion. I've been in that space for nearly 26 years. No, 26 years last month. Uh, so uh, I've been doing a lot of that work. We, I've worked with everyone from uh, in, in ten, uh, incredibly large international corporates right through to small businesses. But the, the interesting thing about sales and marketing in particular is it not just the client focused retail side of what marketing and sales is all about. It's often about engagement, which means that internally we help uh, teams engage within the business just as much as they do in recruitment. And the other areas of where do we need to engage people for the business outcomes? Yes, absolutely. And you actually came to join us really recently with our Evolution members. And for those that were there on the day and those who are members know that you're actually my partner and you're in the next room right now, which is a little bit Yay. weird. Very exciting. At over the there. Time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, very exciting at the same time. But for those who are forum members or just part of the L&D community who are watching this today, tell us a little bit about the insights you shared on that. So you came and you, you shared with us a little bit about getting bums on seats, which is such a really difficult thing. A metaphor Metaphorically, a lot of the times now for L&D professionals, you have to run these trainings, but they're not mandatory to attend, or it could be programs, or it could be compliance work, and they don't have a team environment or even a staff base that are really interested in getting that stuff done. I know L&D professionals, we are lovers of learners, of learning, and it's something that we love to do, but it's hard to make other people do it too. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, in the session, obviously, um, we were very much specifically speaking to the members that were in the, the room, but there are so many learnings that you can take into your own business because the concept of bums on seats, you know, uh, we've both been uh, working quite heavily in the uh, event space for, you know, several years, if not decades. Uh, and one of the, the keys to get people there is, you know, what's in it for them, right? What is in it for them? Now, for many of you in the L&D space, it's going to be a bit challenging because there'll be regulatory requirements as to why you need someone to do some training or go through a process or join a program or a system or whatever it might be. And uh, still, the question needs to be asked, what's in it for me? And uh, for one of the examples, I believe, on the session, we were talking about how uh, going through the process may actually help them with their own career journey. So again, back to the what's in it for them piece. Now, there are a lot of competing factors, especially for L&D uh, managers or even internal communications managers and uh, or even safety. I actually work a fair bit in the safety space. There are all these messages coming out that you need to uh, engage uh, your different stakeholders in the business. And so I think one of the, the biggest pieces that you, you need to focus on is really how are those messages coming out in as far as like, are we overlaying messages? Are we confusing messages by having three messages go out at the same time? Are people not seeing the messages because of either uh, too many competing messages or lack of repetition? And so one of the things that I shared with the, the people in the forum was, what are the other ways that you can actually communicate something that is important at this period in time? And so maybe you'll have one major campaign internally mm -hmm. where instead of just being intranet based, you might actually have uh, some other activities, whether it be email, whether it be posters in the workplace, whether it be initiatives in team meetings, that you can actually bring that message through different avenues to make it stick. So the challenge is really to go, what is the key message we want to push at this period of time? And then what are the secondary messages? So we understand how much repetition needs to happen. Yes, and I think that's a, such a big thing that our evolution members, and I've heard it with our forum members as well, um, are finding they live and breathe what they're putting together. And for them, it's it's often one of the biggest projects they're working on or one of a few, mm -hmm. but it's, it's their work life. They're working on this. This is important to them. They know all about it. But when you're on the outside of that and you're not on the L&D team, in fact, you may be on the front line, 
what's happening internally can be really tricky to actually know about. And sometimes yeah. just communicating that message effectively uh, is different for an L&D professional than they would necessarily feel it is. It's sometimes just a lack of knowing how internal marketing can support just people showing up because they know what's going on. But Russell, what are your tips and advice for L&D professionals who weren't at the evolution session um, who are watching this interview uh, to actually get people excited about coming along? So it's one thing for them. Yes, they know about it. And you shared some good intel then on, on helping spread the word through the business. Yep. But how do you actually get them engaged before they walk in the door? Yeah, well, there's multiple ways to do uh, engagement. Um one of the things I remember we talked about this years ago, which is like, uh, if you're doing internal marketing, if you do marketing in general, uh, the, the, the marketer, the communicator needs to be very, very good at digging and finding out what's going on in the business. Mm -hmm. So just a tip for everybody who's in L&D is that get to know who are the other internal communicators. So you're going to have the OHS department, you're going to have the marketing department, you're going to have potentially the HR department, obviously L&D. Uh, form some sort of syndicate with those people so that you can actually uh, collaborate in some of the messages. And I'm, I'm saying that f on one end because it enables you to, to team up so that the timing of the messages really is in, in sync, but also you can double up on the theming of a message and potentially you can uh, bring two or three messages together, which then talks to the other part of how do you get more people engaged? Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a larger theme, uh, you know, uh, give it some sort of fancy title or graphic and all these sort of things where you actually have, all right, the business is focusing on this thing right now that maybe combines a number of different initiatives and maybe they become three steps within the larger campaign. We start creating a vernacular. We start creating a language, which is, uh, you know, the, the ABC thing is very important now and everyone's talking ABC. Right, well, ABC stands for these three steps and they relate to safety, they relate to the new initiative we've just kicked off and they relate to getting into the new system program, mm -hmm. right? So there are ways for you to collaborate on one end and actually create these little syndicates and um, uh, really good at sharing information when information is going to go out. Try not to silo things between departments. And on the other is creating theming around these things. So first step, theme that's going to catch someone's attention. So they're going to get a bit of interest. The mm -hmm. second step should always be this byline, which is what's in it for me, as I said before. And creating that, that byline is probably the most crucial part of getting people to take action. So why should they care about this thing? Yes, I think one of the biggest things I learned from our session with you as well is, is on that front. What you think's in it for you is not necessarily what's actually in it for them, if that makes yeah. So having those conversations is super important, which, because I think sometimes, again, we live and breathe this stuff as L&D professionals, it's what we do, and it's all, you know, we're living the project, and we think we know the answer to that, but just by having a conversation with your learning advocates, you can really actually un understand. And what's, and what's important about that too is needs versus wants. Um, yeah, you talk to a lot of entrepreneurs out there in the wide world and they want to solve a need in the market. But in actual fact, people don't engage in a need. It's like going to the, the doctors because they've got a pain in their lead. Yeah, they need to have it diagnosed, but people avoid the doctor, right? It's like, what is the want? What is the thing that they want? And actually tie it into the thing they want. They want career progression. They want increased salary. They want a better workplace. Mm -hmm. They want to have better conversations. They want to feel more confident, safe, secure in their role. How can you meet on those wants? And I guess the trick, uh, which I suggest to anyone I work with, is how can you get into the conversation so that you understand what is the context for them right now? So mm -hmm. where are they? And then ideally, what are they wanting? What are the challenges they're experiencing? What are the outcomes that they want? Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you play into their wants versus their needs and you'll, uh, you'll get way more people engaging much easier. Yes, so true, because often as well, what we want them to know is not what they want to know. Um, and the training just happens to be the solution to achieve the thing that they want. You know, it's like you're looking for career progression. I have this great compliance training. And when you tick all those boxes, you may have that opportunity. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things we did talk about on the on the forum was uh, if you can step back uh, before you go into launch, because a lot of people do the design of the thing, whatever the thing is, yeah. and they're like, all right, now we need to communicate it out. Now we need to launch. If you start well before there and actually say, uh, let's speak to the market we're going to want to engage. What okay. do they want right now? Then we're actually going to draft some ideas, get some leaders within the organization engaged mm -hmm. in those ideas, have them add something of themselves. So there's some ownership around being in this program and you're going to get far more engagement through that process because you've designed it with people, you've mm -hmm. designed it with collaboration, 
uh, than actually just designed a thing and then communicated it out. Yes, actually something you said just then was pure gold. I'm just going to highlight it again for everybody because it was part of so much other wisdom. It doesn't, um, no, of course I've forgotten what it was. Hold on. <laughs> Let me just rewind that a second. What the fuck was it? Oh, designing it with people. Collaborate. Collaborate. Leaders, ownership, buy-in. Ownership, thank you. That was the thing. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Actually, one of the things that you just said then, Russell, was pure gold, and I'm just going to illuminate it for everybody because it was amongst so much other wisdom. I think it's something to really take away for everybody that's looking to get more people engaged with their training instead of having to push a boulder up a hill with a wet noodle, so to speak. Um, ownership. If mm. you can get your learners to take ownership of their experience with that training, they're far like more likely going to get in and get involved. And I think what you said there was just such a good piece of information and intel for everyone watching this today. Yeah, well, ownership, like, it, 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 there are steps to create ownership. And obviously, a lot of LD professionals will understand what they, they are, but part of it's collaboration, but part of it's having them involved in the design. Uh, part of that's creating champions that were actually part of uh, part of the initial research. So they go, yes, this is something that I want to lead. They're going to be um, become champions in different departments, and so understanding the different levels of collaboration and the things that actually create ownership is a great process before you go launching anything. Yes, yeah. And what would you recommend um, on the same team but different front? Uh, so there's a lot of L and D professionals who inherit training programs and yep. they get given it if they're in a high compliance and highly regulated um, industry, which many of our forum and evolution members are as well. What would you recommend on that front when you don't have the opportunity to, to do that up front? Well, I mean, the, the same thing happens uh, in any other marketing space. Will there be a program that, that has been around for a long time? But we need to get more buyers or more engagers in the actual program is a case of, I look at it as campaign work. So uh, what is the message for a certain period of time? And then how do we change that message? And then how do we change that message? Sometimes a campaign is progressive. So this message ties into the next step, ties into the next mm -hmm. step. And so growing a campaign, growing the engagement that way is, is one of the options. But the other way is to actually just take a, a campaign very much like a cube and say, all right, we're looking at it from this point of view. What happens if we turn it this way and have a look at a different perspective and then a different perspective and then a different perspective? We get to highlight different tangible benefits could be the actual focus for a month, a quarter, or even a year to to engage in a storytelling process uh, and that's what campaigns are all about like how do we actually uh, uh you know attract um uh, create interest engage and help people take action yes that's fantastic and thank you so much for sharing so much gold with us in this short 10 minute snippet as it is there's just so much value that you have to give and i know in our session everybody very much felt that way i got some oh, amazing shucks. feedback <laughs> i'm biased but I'm biased, everybody yeah. else loves you as well. So that's fantastic. <laughs> our, members, our members loved you. Um, and if you're not a member of the evolution and you're watching this, you can access Russell's recording in our Harry Potter style resource library. What does that mean? Message me and I will tell you all about it and we can get you into the evolution as well. Russell, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. I'll see you as soon as we walk out the door and give you a high five. <laughs> But if you're watching this, everyone, make sure you click or look around for the instructions on how to join the evolution and we'll see you in there.